Okay, this is your basic dial arc with the uh, Ackerman steering. Gas is it's a conversion thing. Ah, pretty heavy. That's how it works, you know. Dial arc. I'll steer it down toward you. Maybe it'll focus in on you. There you go. Now we're going to go out of the frame for a second. And back into the frame, you know. Your basic $175 ACTC Dial Arc HF. Yeah. Put it on eBay. Except it wasn't like this when I got it. I had to do quite a bit of work on it. This dolly alone. <laughs> yeah, this dolly alone. Considerable engineering on the dolly. Ackerman steering casters. I stayed up late at night figuring this one out. And even then, it doesn't swing more than 45 degrees. Yeah, let's see how this looks. Like that, and like that. Nothing hits for, you know, you can steer it from up here. And the handle comes down. It's, uh, let's see. Yeah, put it up here for you. Comes down like this. The friction holds it, it'll go all the way down to the ground, but it'll stop wherever you put it, except the driveway slanted. But the handle will go down to the ground, and I got this loop on it. I made the buggy. <coughs> the buggy weighs, there's no telling how much the buggy weighs. The buggy probably weighs in the neighborhood 250 pounds. <laughs> by itself without the dial arc. The dial arc's a 500 pound thing. And uh, I made the axle, and I made the Ackerman steering caster. I converted these, these are just regular swivel casters. And uh, I had this giant piece of angle, this giant piece of channel iron here, which I think is uh, it's either nine or 10 inches wide, but the web thickness is uh, a half an inch. <coughs> it's what I had, you know, so it's what I used. Obviously it's different iron wheels. I bought the wheels surplus, there was scrap, you know, in the junkyard deal. And uh, Fairbanks, 8 inch on the front, and I don't know, I think the back ones are about 6 inch. And uh, the dial arcs held to the buggy with, uh, <coughs> with um, 6 metric bolts, because I had a metric tap and I had the metric bolts, but I was short on American bolt. This, uh, this decal is missing the white outer edge because it was all frayed and uh, gnarly. I painted the whole deal, of course, and uh, I painted the dial arc. I sprayed it. Yeah, and it's kind of... I did a pretty good paint job on it, I think. And uh, let's see. Look. I cleaned it inside now. That's what it looks like up close and personal. And, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's a show and tell thing today, you know? We're making a quick movie. I also made... I also made this, uh... white pointer knob. The knob was here, but the pointer was broken. It was plastic, I think. But this is made out of 16th inch aluminum. <coughs> <coughs> Held to the back of the knob with three, three screws. And uh, it's exactly in the right place, that's where I set it. I don't turn this thing uh, more than I need to. I'm not gonna turn it for you now, but it does turn. I think it wears the rheostat out. That's my personal theory. And uh, 
I don't like buying rheostats unless I need to. But anyway, I, not only did I spray this thing, I mixed the colors. I made the colors. This, this was an extremely bright blue, and I uh, and I had to darken it up. But I added black slowly over time until it became the exact right color. This piece, this piece, and that piece have been painted. Both sides have been painted, and the top's been painted. And uh, but this part below the uh, this part below the label has not been painted. This part has. This part hasn't. So the match is pretty good. And uh, I had to <coughs> I had to work around the decals, obviously. And this faceplate is uh, much cleaner now than it was. But um, but I'm, I'm planning on silk screening a new faceplate. So, uh, you know, that's in the future, you know, sometime down the road a bit. But here it is. It's a Miller Dial Arc HF. It's what I call a white face. The white face model. I'll give you some zoom-ins on, on the casters. I'm pretty proud of those things. They're heavy-duty deals. And uh, of the Ackerman assembly. The Ackerman steering assembly was pretty hard to, uh, pretty hard to dream up. All right. Okay, this is how this <coughs> this is how the casters steer. Good luck. I'll be able to show it to you. Whoops. I got the back wheels chopped, but apparently <laughs> apparently they want to move. But this is the linkage. I got two separate steering bars under there. And uh, they only go over about 45 degrees and maybe not even 45 degrees each way for unknown reasons. And uh, I can't get them to go any further. Actually, I have stops in there. I'll show you those in a little while. But I have uh, spring-loaded stops to keep them from going further because once they go past uh, about 40 degrees either way, they tend to lock up, bind solid. But anyway, this is how they uh, this is how they steer. Uh, I had to convert the casters, obviously. They weren't meant to steer with an Ackerman deal, and uh, you know, I just made it from what I had laying around, and, you know, it's Ackerman steering. I call them Ackerman steering, you know. It's probably not true Ackerman. Who knows what it is, you know. But it's, it's fairly substantial. It'll carry the load. Uh, I'm planning on putting a wooden top on this thing, by the way, uh, on top of the dial arc, you know. And then on top of that goes my, uh, my drill press later on the front, and either my bench grinder or the TIG cooler on the rear. So, you know, because I have limited space in the garage, you know. But we basically have Ackerman steering here. Uh, we have basically, it's a sort of an Ackerman steering, you know. So, that's what it is. And, uh, okay, I'll show you some more cool stuff, you know, if you want to see it. This is the rear fan of the Dialark. And uh, I can tell you one thing for sure, that uh, I took all the rust off of that grill and off the fan blade too. And then I sprayed the fan blade silver, then I clear coated it, and then I, uh, I primed that rear grill with uh, Rust-Oleum after cleaning it for uh, quite a while. I, I uh, primed it with Rust-Oleum and then I brush painted part of it the part I knew the spray wouldn't get. And then I sprayed the rest of the grill and the rear too, the rear of the case too, by the way, uh, with that custom, <laughs> custom mixed Miller Dial Arc Blue. Well, anyway, it holds up to fairly close examination. It's pretty clean. It came out pretty well. And uh, that's the rear fan area. I also made a eighth inch thick aluminum plate behind this. This is where the power cord goes in. I don't know if you can see it over it'll focus. This kind of likes to hunt. But anyway, yeah, this is the cord that came with it, which is only a 50 amp cord. It's a range cord. But hey, you know, home on the range and whatever. But uh, I don't know. I got some 6-4 SO cord, which I may put in there, but it only requires uh, three conductors since it's a single-phase machine.